McCarthy Kaide. I'm Rick Macy. In this episode, seven-time USPTA Coach of the Year Rick Macy will break down the serve and help improve your game. Hi there, I'm Rick Macy and we're going through all the mechanics on the serve. This is On Court with USPTA. Serve is one of the most important shots in today's game. It is the only shot that you have total control of. An effective serve will bring you free points and apply a lot of pressure on your opponent. There are many elements to a successful serve, and by understanding the role and importance of each one, you will be on your way to develop a great weapon. Before we get started, what I'd like you to do, just go ahead and do your serve. Just hit it any way that feels comfortable. Just do your thing and let her fly. Okay, you got a nice motion, you're fluid, grip is pretty good, stance is good, okay, not bad, you got a nice rhythm. Show me the first serve, show me the first serve. Okay, not bad. I know when I said show me the first serve, you're going, that was my first serve, okay? Yeah, you're getting some accidental spin on the ball and I'll explain all that. A few more. You're doing good, you're doing a lot of good stuff, it's healthy, it's healthy, okay? Okay. First thing, your grip is very good. How you hold the grip on the serve is crucial if you want to develop big time power and spin. What I'd like to see is a continental grip that puts the hand in a very flexible position. You can generate a lot of power, a lot of spin, but more importantly, it sets the racket up to lead with the edge so you can pronate properly at the top and get that good pop. So the grip, we're really on track, but let's go to the feet. There, there's two options, and you obviously you've done what we call the platform, where you serve, you're just stationary, and then you drive, and now you're doing what we call the pinpoint. You're bringing your foot up, okay, and then you're gonna drive into the court. How you stand on the serve is critical. What I'd like to see is the following. Left foot, your right-handed player towards the net post. The right foot parallel to the baseline. The heel will come into your arch. When you're in this position, you're gonna make more of a cartwheel. Your body's gonna go more linear towards the target. We want a lot of forward rotation. So when you actually serve the ball, you're gonna be doing more of a cartwheel and your body movements are gonna go towards the target this way. And the last time I checked, that's where you want to hit it. Show me your stance. Okay, right now you're in what I call the neighborhood. You're in the game. What I mean by that is I like the left foot to be pointing towards the net post. I'd like the right foot parallel to the baseline, which you're doing, which I like a lot. I would like this heel should be about right into the arch. Okay, and you're pretty close to that also. Now, I would like to see you bring your foot up a couple inches, this way. There you go, and I'll tell you why. One of the things we don't wanna see is, especially if you're having trouble with the surf, is you don't wanna get the feet real far apart and be doing all this twisting and turning and stuff like that. It's what I call, I want you to be in a cylinder. When you surf, you're gonna be in a cylinder. You're gonna be in a tunnel. With this stance, even though it might feel uncomfortable, and everybody says, oh, it's uncomfortable, or I feel like I'm stuck, I'm in jail, I'm on probation, it's okay, because it's gonna make you go more forward. And that's a, that's a big thing when I get through this whole progression. Now, go ahead with your take back, and show me how you enter the back. Okay, now, the position that you're going to here is spot on also. How you take the racket back on your serve has a major league impact on the performance. There's really two options. You can just let the arms go down and up together, or you can bring the racket straight up in an abbreviated motion. Either way is acceptable, and I'd want you to experiment. The main thing is, at the end of your backswing, make sure you get that elbow up.
a lot of players, when they bring the racket back, okay, and you're not doing it, so you're doing a lot of good things here. You take the racket, a lot of players take it back this way, okay, the hand kind of opens up, and when they go back, they what we call externally rotate that way. You're not doing that. You got your palm down, and you're coming in towards the ear. So it's like edge comes in. The edge should come in towards the ear, and you're doing that, and I really like that. I mean, that's you. The big problem that we got here is 100% timing. Leg drive initiates racket speed. What I mean by that is as the racket starts to enter the back, the leg should be coming up. What happens is a lot of players get the racket in too soon, even if it's only a few inches, and it really disrupts the power and the overall timing. This is a very common problem around the world, and I would say the number one problem I've seen over the last 25 years. Remember, leg drive should initiate the racket speed. And the only way to really clean this thing up is to learn it in progressions. The timing of the leg drive and the racket entry, or what I call the synchronization of the racket coming in and the legs is off. The reason why you're not getting the power, when you take the racket back, the racket is already into the back. Okay, the racket is into the back. You've tossed the ball, you've bent your knees, You've tilted back, you've got a lot of good things. You toss, you bend, you tilt, but the racket is in too soon and the legs are still bent. Best way to correct this is this. What I want you to do, get in your position, have your feet a little closer together. Like I said, your grip is fine. What I want you to do is just put your racket up. Okay, so we got a 90 degree angle. See, this is a 90 degree angle and you're gonna tilt the racket forward. All right, so we're gonna actually start from this position. Keep it right there. Don't move it, don't move it, don't move it, don't move it, tilt back, tilt back. Drive! Again, you're in the game. That was interesting. You actually were kinda late getting in there, which is good. That's the exact opposite about what was happening. Set your racket. So 90 degrees, right here. You're gonna toss, bend, and tilt. Hold, drive! Okay, give me some feedback. Did that feel like your old serve? No, not at all. Wait, no, not at all. I mean, that wasn't like no, that was like no, not at all. Did it feel like it kind of jumped off your racket? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and did it feel like you had all that accidental spin? No. no. See, and because before you would have it here, it, you'd have a lot of accidental spin. Also, another byproduct of correcting the timing like this you're gonna feel more extended, and you're gonna feel like you're laying in the court, okay? This is a game changer for you, but you're gonna to have to have a lot of patience and work it from this progression, because this is the first step. Okay, go ahead and put your racket there. Boom. Keep it there, keep it there. Hold it, drive! Hello! You see the difference there? Yeah. See, so you're still getting spin, you're still hitting up, and, but, you're, but you're more dynamic. It's totally different. And the only way to do it is you gotta do it in progressions. You gotta start from here and master that. And you did a heck of a job. Now, you graduated. Now what you're gonna do is this. You're gonna put in what we call a hesitation. You're gonna do the same thing, but you're gonna wind up like you do, and you're gonna come here and hesitate. This is the next correction to the serve. If you experiment, you're gonna get better. You sometimes gotta take a deep breath, break it down, experiment on one little part, then sew it back together and you're ready to go. 1,001 and then drive the leg. That's awesome. Hold, go. Better. I see that smile, I know what that means. And right there, yep, tilt, hold it, leg drive. Don't even worry about the racket. Leg drive initiates it. Hello! See the difference? Start from here and try to serve. Don't let that racket move. Remember, the legs are gonna drive the racket. Or do the wind up. Hold it, 1,001, and then drive. Leg drive will make the racket go faster, but you gotta time it. So build in a hesitation, you can correct this problem.
You gotta remember, when you've done something for a long period of time, over and over, the muscle memory is so programmed that way. And what we gotta do is we gotta reprogram the reflexes. When you start the person from a different area, the brain gets a little confused. Like, I've never been here, so it's much easier to learn. I can rewire things differently. How the racket enters the back area is crucial if you want your serve to really pop. The racket head should come in towards the ear. You lead in with the edge. A lot of players take the racket back and they externally rotate it the wrong way. And this sets everything up to be much more difficult. So when you take it back, make the edge come to the ear, your serve's gonna get a lot more pop. As the racket goes back, okay, you do your take back. Now, the racket starts to come into the back. Show me how it comes in, okay? Now, what we'd like to do, when the racket comes into the back area, you wanna make sure that you're leading. When you come into the back, the edge of the racket should be coming towards your ear. One of the most common mistakes when players come in, they go here and they do what we call externally rotate their arm the wrong way. And this just leads to all other issues the rest of the serve. So the take back, bringing the edge in. I like to tell the players, edge in, edge out. You know, the edge has to come in. So when you're doing this, one of the things I really like that's happening is, okay, when you get this timing correct, you do come in at your ear, okay? The racket, it should go down the middle of the head, which yours is doing. A lot of players, it goes way over here. So the entry is very good, and then the sweep. When you sweep back out, it's in a good position too. As the racket enters the back area on the serve, it's very important you understand that relaxation is a major key. Many times people think that you try to force the racket down the back, or you're trying to scratch your back. This is really incorrect. What we'd like to see, when you enter the back and then you drive those legs up, the racket should actually just kind of sweep in and sweep out. You want to let it happen. So remember, think sweep and your serve's going to be a lot better. See, you want all these things are interwoven. A to B, B to C, they all affect one another. If one part of the chain is messed up, it's going to affect another. So if we get this timing, down, it's going to be, your serve's really going to take off because you're doing a lot of great things, okay? How the racket comes in is correct, how it sweeps out is correct. Now, once you sweep out, okay, you're getting your elbow up very quickly, which I like. It's getting up and forward, which is critical. One of the key aspects of serving well is you got to understand to get the elbow up and forward a lot quicker. One of the bigger mistakes that I see is people have a tendency to keep the elbow down. As the forward swing goes, get that elbow up and forward as quickly as possible. As you're swinging, get the elbow up and forward. When you do that, it's gonna be a lot easier to come over the top. Go ahead and start from there. Good, so you got a 90 degree angle, a little tilt, okay? You're gonna to toss, bend, and tilt at the same time. Okay, the leg drive makes the racket go down, sweep, do all this extra stuff. Don't move it, don't move it, don't move it. Drive! You're getting there, you're getting there. Again, that's okay, that's okay. It's interesting, you kind of went the other way, you're actually a little too far away, but I like that. I like it when the student does the exact opposite of the original problem, because that means we're gonna meet somewhere in the middle. Keep going, you're doing great. I think this one's gonna be a firecracker. Hold it, drive! Firecracker! As your racket enters the back area, you're gonna lead in with the edge, and you're gonna come out with the edge. The edge of the racket, the side of the racket, comes in, and as you drive your legs, you turn your hips and trunk, the edge flares out. This sets the table for the big power that you're gonna get on the serve.
You got a lot of great tips so far on the serve. Let's go to a few more that are left on the menu. A big key to hitting a great serve is understanding the edge of the racket. On the forward swing, the edge of the racket should be going up and out. If you have a great grip, this is going to happen. But you want to lead with the edge, almost like you're throwing a javelin. When you lead with the edge, you're going to get more power, more spin, and more importantly, you're going to get that good snap at the end. Now, once you sweep out, okay, you're getting your elbow up very quickly, which I like. It's getting up and forward, which is critical. You're leading with the edge, and that's only possible because you got a great grip. You're gonna lead with the edge. The racket comes back to the inside, and then it's what we call, you're leading with this edge, your hand and forearm turn outward a little bit, okay, which we call pronation. What happens near the end of the serve is very important everybody understand. When you're doing your forward swing and you've set this thing up, you want to feel the forearm when it comes up to the ball. It's going to be turning outward. As you lead with the edge, this outward movement is called pronation. It's going to create a lot of power, a lot of wrist flexion, and you're going to get a lot more pop on your serve. You're going to feel this snapping effect, okay, this way. You're going to feel this thing snap. What I like to tell people, and you're doing this, you're doing a great job, okay, you're leading with the edge, and then you're high-fying a giant. Okay, you're leading with an edge, you're high-fying a giant to flatten out. The hand will actually turn a little bit this way. A big key to serving well is understanding exactly where the racket is coming from. As you start to drive your legs, your hips, and your trunk, the racket flares to the outside. It's gonna come back to the inside, and then to the outside. So remember, outside, inside, outside for a better serve. The follow through afterwards will just kind of sweep across to the other side of your body. But because of you using your legs much better now, you're gonna also focus on how you land. You're gonna naturally be landing a little bit more in the court on the left leg. So on this follow through, okay, when you're gonna be landing on your left leg, okay, and you'll be doing this. When you drive up and out and over the top on the serve, it's very important that you understand that you want to land in the court. You want to land on your front leg. When you do that, you're going to have a lot more momentum, your body weights towards the target, and your serve's going to have a lot more pop. Go. Good try. Again, I like what's going on. Sounding better, sounding better. Again, keep your weight back a little longer. Better off, start from here, back on probation. Sorry, you'll be off in a second. Back on probation, don't move it, don't move it, don't move it, don't move it, don't move it. Try! Again, and when you come up as hard as you can. Try! Hello! Doesn't matter it went out. See, there's many, there's many factors why a ball goes in and out. All I'm trying to do is coordinate the problem with his serve. The problem, which trumped everything, was his racket was into his back too soon, his legs were still down, so the legs and racket were working at the same time. We don't want that. It's counterintuitive. As the racket comes in, the legs should be coming up. That's gonna expedite the racket in quicker, out quicker, up faster and you get all this explosive power. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. My main suggestion would be this. What you want to do developmentally is in a tournament, if you have a tournament around the corner, do whatever you want. But I think if you put in the work from that position and you understand that you got to keep it there and your legs should drive it, I would practice this way. I would practice this way where you hesitate. Because when it's all said and done, there's not a wrong way or a right way, there's a better way. But with timing, <laughs> there is only one way. And as the racket comes into the back, the legs should be driving. And if Kartha can make this change, huge difference in his serve. Good job. Thank you. As you can see, there's many pieces to having a great serve. But the big ticket item 
The real game changer is the timing. Remember, leg drive. The leg drive initiates racket speed. When that racket starts to go into the back, you want the legs coming up. It's one of the biggest mistakes that we have. Good luck with your serve. If you need more help with your game, contact a local USPTA professional at USPTAfindapro.com.